So welcome to my kitchen. This is Cooking Today. Hosting for the holidays, sponsored by Petty G Meats. Hi, welcome to Cooking Today. Thanks for joining me. We are celebrating this season with a special series every Friday leading up to Christmas called Hosting for the Holidays. And it's sponsored by Petty Jean Meats. And what we wanna do is just show you some really great comfort recipes. We're gonna do a couple of like, app we do appetizers and party things and soups to like when you're hosting your people in your house. And um, we're gonna do ham and some really great things to get you ready for hosting the holidays. And maybe even a little taking for the holidays. Like in case you have to go to a party, we'll make you a couple of little fun things. But that's what we're working on today. I am making, now that you're gonna, you may be surprised, you may say, what does this have to do with holidays? Well, I'm gonna tell you. We're making red beans and rice. This is Sam's absolute, very favorite dish. He always, I've told y'all forever, he loves to spice things up. He loves anything Cajun. He'll put hot sauce. We have literally, I don't even know how many jars and bottles of like Louisiana hot sauce and all kinds of things. It, he loves it. So this is my meal that I make for him on his birthday or when he's had a really long week at work. This is my love meal to Sam Hannon. And the reason that I am making it for our holiday series is because I almost always serve soups when my families are in town over for the weekends, um, maybe just like a little dinner party. It doesn't always have to be turkey and ham, does it? Now we love those, but sometimes we can kind of get turkeyed and hammed out and we need to have a little something else. So let me tell you what we're gonna get going first and then we're gonna talk a little bit more about our red beans and rice. I have two whole packages of Petit Jean meats like smoked sausages that I just kind of cut on a little bias so that we have lots of good surface area and it's just a little bit pretty. And I have my preheated brazier and I am putting these in my brazier to get a little color on them first. We don't want them to be soft and mushy. We want them to have some color and a sear. You know, we always do that here, don't we? get a little sear on our meat because it tastes good, that flavor. So, I would make this red beans and rice during the holiday season when we have company come over and let's say they're coming for the whole entire weekend. And we're gonna have our formal meal for the holidays, something a little bit more traditional, you know, but they're here on like a Friday night and we just want to have a good something hearty to, for them to eat that's so comforting and good that is completely different, completely different flavor profile from all of the traditional holiday things because we get so much of that anyway, don't we? I also love to make a good hearty soup on like Christmas Eve. I almost always have a pot of soup after we go to church and have our candlelight service. I almost always have a good hearty pot of soup or something waiting that's really, really easy to make because we'll do traditional the next day. So if you're hosting this season, this red beans and rice is so rib sticking. It goes a really long way and it's just good. It's not hard a bit. I can't wait for you to see how easy it is to make this. So we're getting a little bit of color and a little bit of flavor on our sliced smoked sausages. And I'm just gonna use my little turner here. I want it pretty hot so that we get some brown, brown on those parts. And you know, one of the things when you're trying to get a good little sear on these, or a little you know brown color, is you don't wanna just stir them to pieces. You wanna leave them in there and let them be still so they can you know, the surface can touch your pan and then, you know, create that little good brown spot that we really love to eat. That's just the best bite. So let's do a little bit of prep on what else is going in this red beans and rice. We are going to, we have sliced and we're going to chop 
one entire orange pepper. You don't have to get hung up on the fact that it's orange. I think it's pretty and I think it's sweet. I love the flavor of this, um, this orange pepper, this orange bell pepper. It's a pretty traditional choice to put a green pepper in your red beans and rice. We are not green, we, we don't like green peppers. We just never have. We feel like they're a little bit bitter, so I always lean a little bit more toward red, orange, or yellow variety. So I just cut the, you know, went around the middle, cored it, cut it into strips. There is no reason to get all fussy about your um, knife, you know, skills here. They just need to be chopped. They're gonna have plenty of time to cook down and get tender and really good. So let me chop these. And then, you know what we need to get going is our rice. We have Uncle Ben's rice, just a good old white rice, and that's by Mars. Did you know that Mars has rice as well? So I just have a good classic white rice. We'll stick that on when we get back. I may get my water going on it. And then when we come back, I'm going to remove those, um, these browned pieces from our brazers. They will have had plenty of time. Oh, yes, starting to get brown. We're going to remove those and put them over on a sheet pan just to kind of lay low until we are ready to stir them in at the end. I can't wait for you to try this recipe. We'll be back in just a minute talking about red beans and rice for the holidays. This is Cooking Today. Cooking Today, hosting for the holidays. Sponsored by Petty Jean Meats. Hi, welcome back to Cooking Today. We're making red beans and rice today, Sam's favorite. As a matter of fact, I titled the recipe Sam's favorite red beans and rice. Isn't that creative? It's really, really good, y'all. And it's so easy. Let me tell you what we have going on. We browned our little kind of rounds of our smoked sausage. They're gorgeous. They are just snackable. I mean, it would be so easy just to like get a toothpick and eat them. They're delicious. Or not even a toothpick, just eat them. <laughs> Who needs a toothpick, right? And I've removed those and I just put them right here on this sheet tray with, just covered with a little bit of cling wrap or saran so that it'll just kind of keep them warm. We don't want them to be cold because we're gonna put them back in at the end. Then I got my Uncle Ben's rice going and it is just follow the box, easy as that. You want about a cup and a half to two cups. So I just went ahead with the two cup measurement on the box and I have it simmering. You know, rice is such a piece of cake. It's a really nice filler too. Then I have six pieces of my Petty Jean bacon over here that I cut into the little squid, you know, little lardons is what it's called. But basically little strips. I've chopped it before I put it in my pan and I'm letting those get crisp, which this is a little bit of my spin on red beans and rice. I love the bacon. I love that smoky flavor that it gives everything. It is such a good little crispy garnish at the very end. And what we're doing, the main purpose of making the bacon is because we're getting this fat out of the bacon and that is gonna become our flavor base that we're gonna saute our little veggies in and all that. Y'all, it's so, so good. Okay, and then we have our chopped yellow, um, orange pepper. Could be yellow if you wanted. I like the orange. I have a couple of cloves of garlic. This is kind of up to you, it's up to taste. I'm giving it just a little chop. I had one big one and two itty bitty ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the th all three. Give that a little chop. I'm gonna go check on my bacon real quick. And then we're only gonna do about a half of a yellow onion or so. Um, oh yeah, we're good. I'm gonna take my strainer here and get these out. And so all I wanted to do is get those a little bit browned and then get that good grease on the bottom of my pan. Now, let me say this. If you do not have bacon or you don't want the bacon pieces or you wanna cut this step out just for the sake of time, you could just start with a couple of tablespoons of bacon grease if you just save your bacon grease. You should be saving your bacon grease. It's delicious, get a little jar, let it cool, you know, put it in there. 
especially for the holidays because y'all all good things that taste really good basically start with bacon or at least bacon you know bacon fat it's just the truth okay I'm turning that temp way down I don't want that to get too hot while I don't have any food in it we would have a terrible fire um so you could skip the bacon step if you didn't want to go to that trouble but I would encourage you to do the bacon. It's delicious, it's so good on the end. And again, this is a really soft, spoonable dish. So there's just something kind of good about having that tiny bit of crisp and really, really salty smoky on it at the end as a little garnish for a little bit of extra flavor and texture. So you might try it. But save your bacon grease, start right now because you really are gonna need it by Thanksgiving and Christmas when you're doing your cooking. And if you need some, I probably have 58 jars. <laughs> I should sell my bacon grease at my store. Wouldn't that be hilarious? Um, okay, so I only have about, <clears throat> I don't know, a quarter of an onion, half of an onion. I'm doing a half on this one because the onion was small. And so I'm just gonna give it a little chop. Again, you don't have to be crazy precise on this. It doesn't matter, it's a hearty, rustic dish. I keep saying dish, I, I lean toward calling red beans and rice a soup. And I know some of them are soupier than others, but I actually saw a conversation from um, the folks at the station in Little Rock um, were on Twitter talking about um, whether chili was a soup or not. So I would kind of put this in the um, category of like a chili, kind of a hearty spoonable dish slash soup, wouldn't you say? Oh, there it sounds. Doesn't that sound good? That is flavor, y'all, sizzling away. Okay, here's what we're going to do. So simple. We've got our yummy little base here. I'm going to saute my onion and my pepper first till they get a little bit tender. We're going to throw in our garlic and just give it a little stir till we smell it. And then we're going to go ahead and get some liquid on it. This is awesome. You're going to love this. You're going to make it for your people. It's comfort. You're gonna want a blanket on the couch. I believe it. This is Cooking Today. Cooking Today, sponsored by West Rock Coffee Company. Hi, welcome back to Cooking Today, making red beans and rice, Sam's favorite. And it's a great comfort dish to make for your people when you've got people coming and going over the holidays and things start to get so nice and chilly outside it seems like it's taking fall has taken fall forever to finally get cold that wasn't that like the longest latest summer ever those hot days oh so we are making these for these good cool chillier days and it's as easy as it can be i have uncle ben's regular old white rice um cooking on the stove it's like recipe on the side of the box. It just simmers for about 20 minutes till it absorbs. Easy, easy, easy. So that's sitting on the side. We have browned yummy Pettigene meat like smoked sausages. We've crisped some bacon and reserved the fat so that we could saute our onion and pepper in that reserved bacon grease for great, great flavor. And they've gotten just tender and the liquid, like all the natural water and stuff that's in those onions and the peppers start to kind of take on and loosen all the brown bits from when we browned the meat. Can you see on the onions and peppers, just the color, those little pieces of the bits and that's just flavor, flavor, flavor. Now, I have reduced my heat when I put my um, pep, uh, garlic in, because you know you don't want to burn the garlic. And now, the best, probably my favorite part about red beans and rice is kind of this roux base. It's kind of that thick, Sam calls it the gravy. Ooh, the gravy on those beans is really good. That's what he says. Um, but you have to create that with a thickening agent, and that is flour. So here's where you put your flour in. This is so important. So we've sauteed, 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 gotten some good color and a little tender. Now, I have about a quarter cup or so of flour that I have just shaken onto the veggies. 
and you want to cook and stir and cook and stir. And it, what it does is it coats the vegetables. It starts to kind of sop up all that good liquid that's in the bottom of our pan. And you want to just let that kind of cook and stir, I don't know, for a couple of seconds, 30 seconds, a minute or so. You want to kind of cook out the flavor of the flour. We don't want it to taste floury or, you know, you don't want to taste that in your gravy. You just kind of want the thickness of what it does. And so we have shaken that on. Look how good. Oh my word. Now, this is so easy, y'all. We're going to pour in a cup of beef stock. Isn't that so simple? Beef stock, all there is to it. I always will have a little bit more on reserve just in case we need to let this sit a little while and you know it thickens and we need to add a little bit more so i always have a little bit more than what i you know know that i need oh okay look do you see what happened look at the gravy that forms so you add the beef stock it loosens the even further all the bits on the bottom and look how it works with the heat and the flour to create that base isn't it beautiful oh my gosh y'all are gonna be so proud of this you're gonna love this Okay, and then easy, store-bought red beans. I have three cans of store-bought red beans. Red beans are a thing. I'm not talking about getting like red kidney beans or light red kidney beans. Red beans are the name of the bean. You are absolutely welcome to boil your own and start from a dry bean if you would like. But my spin on this or my whole take on this I'm doing so much from scratch cooking for the holiday season. This is a really great quick shortcut that is a time saver, isn't it? So all I did was just drain, you know, there's always that little bit of liquid on the top. I drained, just went like this in the sink, doot, and it just kind of drained that part off the top. And I didn't rinse the beans because there, there is a good kind of a sauce that's kind of on them, kind of their natural liquid. So I went ahead and just, you know, dumped all the rest of it in. And we're going to give it a stir. Now, I have Tony Satry's Creole seasoning. I absolutely love it. I make my own blackening seasoning as well. You can do that if you would like. But these are Sam's black favorite black beans and rice, remember? And he is a Tony Satry's guy. So I have a couple of teaspoons of Tony Satry's. We like it hot. So I'm going to do about two. You might start with one teaspoon and then add another one just to see. Y'all, look at this. Do you see how simple this is? Isn't this so easy? So I'm going to leave the lid off of my brazier. Make sure that this comes to a good little simmer. Stir in my seasonings. Throw in a pinch of salt or so and then taste it. All we have left to do, check our rice, stir in our sausages that we browned at the beginning and call it a day. Isn't that so easy? I can't wait for you to see this one at the end. This is cooking today. Ice tea sponsored by Lipton. Hi, welcome back. We are wrapping up Sam's favorite red beans and rice, a wonderful, hearty, rich, easy bowl that you can make for your family this holiday season or when you've got some company coming over and you just need something nice and warm look at this canned beans a little bit of elbow grease because we sauteed some vegetables that we chopped and then our rice is finished you can add in i usually do a, almost the whole thing just about two whole cups of rice i've tasted for our seasoning it's so it's just really really good you need to hold on your salt until you get your seasoning put in you know like your cajun seasoning and you're also adding in this really salty savory sausage say that three times and that's going to give you a lot of salt as well so just watch before you just kind of go you know seasoning crazy so we've stirred in our rice Remember we got that good flavor, those dark spots, and there's a little bit of good grease that comes right off of those. Grease is a good thing. It's Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. We want 
We want, we want the good stuff, y'all. We can all diet in January, can't we? Look, as a matter of fact, you could even use a turkey sausage. How about that? And then this actually becomes a really super healthy dish. Look, look, look. We're gonna stir in our sausage, spoon it into this bowl. I like a shallow bowl. Top it with our crispy bits of bacon. Look at this. And then a sprinkle of parsley, and that's it. This is comfort for your holiday season, y'all, in a bowl. Look at this. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Try this at home and love every bite. This is cooking today. Cooking Today, sponsored by West Rock Coffee Company. Kitchenware is provided by Una Mays. Iced tea, sponsored by Lipton. Rice, sponsored by Mars. Hosting for the holidays, sponsored by Petty Jean Meats. <laughs>